welcome to another technical video from defaultroot.co.uk. Uh, today we're going to be discussing IP NAT um, source translation and um, this is the first of a, of a three-part video. Um, so this is the, this is the basic configuration uh, of source NAT today. We're going to cover static one-to-one, -one, we're going to cover many-to-one, um, and we're going to cover PAT. So let's crack on. Here's the uh, here's the basic topology today, and and really this is this is just uh, this is just really easy. So we're going to pretend that the client here is R3, and this could be your PC, um, but for the sake of uh, of, uh, of simple of, of breaking this, making this as simple as possible, we're going to use a router. And we're going to use Telnet as the uh, as the client protocol. So this could be your PC here, and uh, this is your this is your NAT gateway. Again, this this would probably be a firewall. Uh, running NAT like a PIX or a, or a, um, an SSG, a Juniper SSG or an ISG, something like that, um, and a firewall anyway, running the NAT. And then the uh, the destination here is going to be our, our server, our Telnet server, as I put it. And uh, we have two two subnets, 123.1.12.0 slash 24 and 123.1.23.0 slash 24. And we try to keep it simple where R1's address is ending dot 1, R2's ending dot 2, and R3's ending dot 3. So um, let's just uh, let's just take a look here um, at uh, configuring uh, PAT or many to one translation here. Simply put, what we mean is um, if this was a, a LAN environment behind your firewall, you'd have you know tens, hundreds of uh, of PC clients. And let's say um, your ISP have given you you know a slash twenty eight or a slash twenty nine or or slash 30 or, or, or you know even even like a host a slash 32 host IP address here um, so you're gonna have very few IP addresses on the public side of your of your firewall and, and hundreds on the inside and um, you can't have a one-to-one -one mapping so R3 to R1 wouldn't have a one-to-one -one mapping you'd need to have um, uh, the, the many the many inside hosts all translated as one or as one probably or, or more uh, ex outside hosts so we tried to replicate that, and uh, we're going to go ahead with a many-to-one translation uh, now. So let's go on to the gateway. So this is that gateway. Basically, for, uh, so the first thing we need to do is, um, is is set up the IP NAT configuration. So IP NAT is the is the original is the part of the of the configuration you need to put in first. So IP NAT, and then we do the context help here. We've got a few choices. Um, so these are probably the the, the two most there's two interesting ones that we that we've got today. So inside and outside. So inside and outside. Now, any, anyone who's seen the the PIX firewall or the firewall services module or the ASA will be familiar with inside and outside, um, or, or the zone-based firewall. In fact, this new the new Cisco uh, iOS firewall uh, configuration. Inside and outside is basically pertaining to your perception of um, the security flow. So, what do I mean by that? On on um, on the diagram. Back to the diagram. If you're the client and you're looking at the firewall's inside interface. Uh, and I'm careful to use the word there. That, that, that's the inside of the network, as far as you're concerned. Anything beyond this interface towards the client is the inside of the network, the, 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 the private addressing, the safe place to be. Beyond that, as you go towards the internet, you're outside of your private network. So the interface closest to you is the inside interface, and the, the 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 interface furthest away from you, or the one closest to the internet, uh, or or the least secure network, as uh, it, which is the, which is the PIX way of describing it, would be the outside network. So we're coming from client to to the inside interface. So our direction is IP NAT inside. We're going to do source translation, destination translation. We'll cover that in another video. We're just going to use a a list. Um, a list uses an access list. Uh, a root map is quite granular. You can use IP. Um, you can use, still use access lists, but you can th use things like protocol type, um, or you can use NBAR to match to match protocols. Uh, it's, it's very it's very well um, it's a very well rounded tool. Root maps, and I I think um, I think we'll see a little bit more of that later on. Um, static is uh, is is the one to is for one to one mappings, but we so we're going to use a list here. So list question mark again, and we, now we've got an access list choice. Um, we're going to use a standard ACL so we'll just use ACL number one. Um, you can choose whatever you like as long as as long as you can write the access list properly. So standard ACLs 1 to uh, 99 and that'd be fine. We're going to use one. So source list one. 
And um, so this is the this is the clever part. So we're going from many to one. So we're going to be using something called PAT, Port Address Translation. So PAT's all about you've got um, lots of inside interfaces, sorry, lots of inside IP addresses, and you want to translate them all to one outside IP address. Now you can't normally do that. Uh, the first client that came along would get the um, the public IP address, and nothing else would be able to use that unless you use something called um, PAT or NAT overload. And in iOS, NAT overload is configured using the overload statement. So um, first after the after the source list one, we've added the interface. So we're saying basically we're going to do source translation based on IP addresses that we see in this access list number one. We're going to translate them using the IP address of the interface fast ethernet 00, which is here 123.1.12.2. So we're going to translate anything that's seen in source access in access list one to 123.1.12.2. And um, we're going to NAT overload that or pat it, so uh, we can have 65,535 ports to translate all the inside host IP addresses to uh, unique ports and um, facilitate multi uh, many to one NAT translation. So that's the command. So uh, we actually just need to write the access list now. So access list one, which is the same one identified in that command, access list one, and then we just uh, choose um, the the inside. Uh, network IP range so 123.1.23.0 and then the wildcard mask 000255 000, 000, this will match 123.1.23.0 through to 255 actually uh, yeah through to 255 that should be all we need uh, to configure PAT so let's go into client let's telnet to the public address of R1 123.1.12.1 we get a login prompt. Let me just uh, log in on there. Oh, and that's the web server. And uh, that's the web server. So we've managed to tell that across. But um, did we get port translated? So what are we expecting? Let me just disconnect this line. What are we expecting to see um, from R1's point of view? What's the IP address that we should see the connection come from? Is it 123.1.23.3? Or is it 123.1.12.2? Well, actually, it is this. It is the latter, um, because your IP address of the inside interface here on on R3 um, should be translated by R2 to this this public IP address. So let's just see if that's working. We'll do, we'll do a debug IP packet on here. Now, be careful if you're running this on a live router. You could uh, you could swamp your console session. So it's not always usually. In fact, it certainly isn't good practice. Best practice to uh, enable this on a live router. Anyway, so on the client now, let's uh, let's do a telnet again. We'll tell that to uh, the router, uh, and you can see all sorts of great stuff here. And uh, this, so this, this is the So you can see the source now is 123.1.12.2, um, and you're going to 123.1.12.1. Okay, so just to clear this, uh, clear this off now. One of the last steps we have to do is a, a is to see the translation table, active translation table on the NAT gateway. So to demonstrate that, we're going to telnet again from the client to the web server, which is a telnet server, I beg your pardon, um, and just so just just basically to start the the translation to make it live, and then we'll be able to have a look at the translation table. So if we actually so we ha if we have a look on the NAT gateway right now, let's just do a show IP NAT uh, translations, translations new. We see there's nothing active right now. Let's and it, let's start a telnet session. One dot twelve dot one. And uh, we'll log in with uh, the password there. So we're connected to the web server, which is uh, this host here. You can see we're coming in. There's the source there, 12.2, which was uh, the outside, if you remember, the outside interface of the gateway box. We'd expect that. That's absolutely fine. Now when we look at the NAT translations on the NAT gateway, we should have a, a host entry in there, which we do. So remember, this is uh, the inside local is, is is where we're coming from. That's, our, that's R3's that's uh, IP address. Uh, inside global is the translated inside local address as far as um, all the outside hosts is a call uh, expect to see. So 123.1.12.2 is the fast ethernet 00, 00 interface on R2. Um, we've also got some statistics on here which will show you the number of hits and misses. Uh, misses would be things that, that, that tried to be translated but couldn't if you remember, we've got um, 
show run in fact let's not bother with that let's just do show access lists one um, this is our access list so we're match we've made five matches this is all that so we've telnated out outbound basically five times um, to 123.1.12.1 .1. that's where the matches are uh, these these 14 misses here are packets that have hit the inside interface of the router and not matched this access list uh, and because we're not logging those we can't find what they are but um, that's what that means and expired translations are basically things that that, that have timed out so the translation started and then uh, and then died died away so uh, just two two great show commands there and uh, oh, don't forget you don't forget your debug but you can always uh, access list that out if you want to run this on a live on a live box you don't have to uh, debug IP packet all one other thing that we that you could probably you could probably be aware of is to clear the translation table is uh, IP, clear IP NAT translations, and you can actually specify which which one you want. You can specify an inside address, an outside address, or uh, or everything. And uh, <coughs> actually, when you're on your lab, it's usually uh, kill everything, and move on, <laughs> do it as quickly as possible. So there we go. That uh, that clears that clears up the show and, uh, and debug and and uh, useful clear command there. Thank you. Okay, everybody. So that was Pat port address translation or NAT overload, and that's the end of uh, this part of the training video for uh, network address translation. Hopefully, we'll see you next time um, for for part two. And uh, thank you for watching.